recording. Okay, everybody, this is lesson two for our Essential Math Grade 12 class in the Home Finance Units. And we are going to learn how to make a mortgage amortization schedule. Basically, we're making a chart. All right, here's how it works. First of all, we're going to actually be making a spreadsheet, is maybe the way to think about it. First thing I'm going to do is, I'm going to read the, the question here. Casey and Evelyn bought a house from Mr. Jones for $65,000. They have a down payment of $15,000. They borrowed the rest from the bank at an interest rate of 6.75. Something very drastically bad would have to happen to our economy for houses to be worth 65000 again. But we're going to keep the numbers small so that we don't have so many numbers to keep track of on our first example here. All right, first steps first. Find the mortgage amount. So the mortgage amount is $65,000 minus the down payment. So that would be $50,000. That's a nice, easy number to work with. Put a unit on that. There we go. So there's the first number, our mortgage amount. Now, where does that number go? OK, so now we're going to go to our chart. And I handed out a page of uh, blank tables. Uh, where did I put it, though? Uh, I have it in here somewhere. Oh, there it is, blank. I wasn't looking for the word blank to be first. There it is. So on this chart, we have borrowed $50,000. So that number goes there. And how much was our down payment? Because that's our equity so far. 15000 goes here. Notice I don't really worry about having dollar signs in this chart. I'm not going to worry about that. Don't, don't worry about units in the chart. Just get the numbers down right. We haven't had a, a payment yet. We haven't calculated any interest yet. We haven't done principal yet. Uh, and of course, there, there is a due date here. It says in the question, let me go back to the question. Uh, yeah, there we go. What was it? It was March the 10th of... of 2012. So, um, okay, now generally speaking, you usually make, just like when you rent an apartment, you usually have to kind of come up with the first month's rent right away. Usually when you're buying a mortgage too, you have to come up with your first mortgage payment when you sign. So that March 10th, 2012 mortgage payment, that's going to be when, or that, that date when, oh, it says the first, yeah, the first mortgage payment was dated that. That number is going to go right here. So the first payment is dated March 12th. And banks do things in, uh, in just numerical. They'd never write the word out in March. So you have to remember which month is which. And I always have to kind of sing it. January, February, March. March is the third month. So 03, 10, and I think it was 2012, right? This is obviously from an old book. So there we go. You have to write the month, month, day, year is the way banks do things. Wouldn't day, month, year make the most sense? But yeah, in some ways, in some ways it would make more sense with banking. For some reason, never does it that way. Okay, we have to calculate how much our monthly payments are. So let's do that next. Okay, so let me go back, and I think that's what it says for number number one here, right? Oh no, step one was find the mortgage amount for number two. So what's the monthly payment formula again? Take how much we're borrowing, divide by a thousand, and times by the table value. Okay, so how do I find the table value again? 6.75% for 25 years. So I go to the table. And I look for 6.75%. So 6.75%, there it is. 5, 10, 15, that's my number. Okay. Or wait, oh, was it, oh, it was 25 years. Never mind, I'm sorry. That's my number, 25 years for this one. This is a longer mortgage. So 6.85 is the number that goes, oops, ah, that goes into my formula. So go back to the notes, 6.85. And again, those zeros cancel those. 50 times 6.85 is $342.50. There we go. That's my monthly payment. And as long as the term, for whatever the length of the term is for my mortgage, and again, remember, this is a 25-year amortization. 
but maybe it's only a five-year term or a six-year term. The common one's five. For every payment for those five years, that's how much we're paying. That doesn't change. So in our chart, that $342.50 doesn't change. Ooh, can I just take a second away from the problem and go on a bit of a rant to try to keep you guys from losing half a mark? I would take off half a mark, I have to, if on that last answer you did this. And I know what people are going to say. They're going to say, but that's what my calculator says. My calculator says, this calculator's not saying anything. Come on, turn on, you. There we go. Whew. To bully my calculator into turning on. 50 times 6.85. Eh, 0.5. Why am I going to take off half a mark if you write that down? It's what the calculator says. What are you thinking? It's money. Money has to have two decimal places. That's a rounding error, and you all know, you all saw it in the last test. Minus one half for a rounding error. Don't lose a half mark on this next test. It is my dream that at least once this year, everybody in the class will have no one half R or one half U on a test. Remember the U, what's the U mistake? Units, forgot units. The last test, a bunch of people forgot to write degrees on things. That's a unit, right? How big's the angle? 70, 70 what? Exactly, you gotta have degrees on it. So come on, we can do this. It is my dream. At least once this year, nobody forgets units, Nobody forgets to round properly. And I, it, is, it is improper to just say 0.5. And I, I don't care if there are fancy restaurants where it says, oh, our hamburger is, is 9.5. I've actually seen that on restaurant menus. Or they're like, oh, nine and a half dollars. Who thinks half dollars? Seriously. Get over yourself, restaurant menu. The rest of the world, we round things to cents. All right, so from there, that number goes in every spot for as long as the term lasts. Let's assume it's a five-year term. So if it was a five-year term, this number wouldn't change for how many payments? 60, because you're paying it every month. So this chart would keep going that way to 60 payments, and they'd all have this much in it. Oops, now I've made two decimals. I didn't mean to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Decimal, there. All right, now we got to figure out the interest. So let's find the interest. The interest, ooh, do we like that word? I don't think I used that word in the lesson two days ago. The interest accrued. That means the interest that ha has uh, accumulated. The interest that you have that you have earned, earned is a bad idea, though, because the word, using the word earned, it makes it sound like you get to keep it. The bank has earned the interest. Yeah, interest, money you have lost to the bank in one month. So let's calculate that. How do we calculate interest again? What's the formula? Pert. So principal, this time you have to use all three zeros, times rate, careful, how do I turn that into a decimal? It already is a decimal. No, it's not. I have to move it over twice. And then what about time again? It's one month, so what do I do? One twelfth. Oh, that's the wrong thing. Oh, hang on. I was looking at the wrong number. What is the what is the interest? Oh, it's 6.75, not 6.85. Thank you. Thank you for noticing. I goofed that up. There we go. That's better. All right. Now we punch buttons again. Move over. 50. 1, 2, 3 times 0 0.0675 divided by 12. I know you could times by 1 twelfth, but dividing by 12 is the same thing, and it's less buttons to punch. Yay. $281.25. There it is. That's the interest that the bank is going to take away from you, that you have to pay them after in one month. Now, the payment itself was only $342. This is $281. So how much principal did we pay that month? Well, it's the $342.50. Minus 
the interest, 281.25. So that's a very small number. I'm going to get that number. 342.5 minus, oh, and I love this answer key. I don't have to repunch that whole number. Last answer, please. 61.25. It's going to take me forever to own this house if I only paid that much towards how much the house costs. Well, it's a 25-year mortgage. So I guarantee you, as we go from this payment to the second payment, this number will get bigger and this number will go smaller. You'll see. Okay, what's the unpaid balance now at the end of the month? Well, I started by owing them $50,000 and then I paid them sixty-one twenty-five. dollars <laughs> Just barely a drop. But every little bit counts. If I do that, subtract, and again, I have that number, so I just have to go 50, 1, 2, 3, minus that last answer, and I get 499.3875. 499.3875. And then, how much of the house do I own now? That one I don't think I need the calculator for. I used to own 15,000, which was my down payment. I gained 61.25 in equity, and you could just put those into there and 15.06125. There we go. That's my new equity. Okay, so now let's fill out the chart. Everybody got all those numbers? So go back to the chart and put where they go. So, on my chart, mm. There we go. So I calculated that that interest payment was 281.25. Let me make that prettier. It's bothering me. I can't seem to make it go away. Okay, I can't make it go away. Oh, my pen's died. I had this happen yesterday as I was making a video too. This is this is very very annoying. Okay, they tell me what I should do is unscrew the pen, try to tighten it, and put it back in. Because the batteries are reasonably new. It can't be a battery issue. Oh, there we go. We're back. Okay, so what was that? There, that's better. Okay, so that was the interest. And how much did we calculate for the principal again? $61.25. And the unpaid balance we calculated was four ninety nine thirty eight decimal 75 Sorry that the blanks aren't very big. We have to kind of scrunch our writing. And our new equity is we now own 15000 $61.25 worth of this house. Guess what we have to do next? Repeat. We have to do the same calculations again. But this time, this is the number we start with. So, go back to the booklet. I think they give you some room there. And then it says step seven, lather, rinse, repeat. Did you know that your shampoo had instructions? And it says lather, rinse, repeat? Okay, there you go. Okay, so let's repeat the process. So how do we start this process again? Well, we go, okay, we, well, we don't have to do the mortgage amount again. We know that, but we, and we don't have to do the monthly payment amount. That's the same, but we have to do our interest calculation again because now the principal now is how much it was at the end of one month which was $49,938.75 times, and what was that decimal again? See, I almost goofed it up last time. Thanks. So. I did goof it up. You guys stopped me. 0 0.0675, right? It was, that was it. And then times a 12. So bring up the calculator. And, oh, look at that. I still have that number. I don't have to punch it in. Yay. Times 0 0.0675. Divided by 12. And that's 2. Okay, now what are we going to do here? Well, we're, well, this is money. We're going to round it to two decimal places. But you know what? I'm going to keep using the number that's on my calculator because that's what banks do too. Think about it. If every single transaction over the millions, if not billions, for a large bank number of transactions happened a day, that they rounded off half of a cent, 
think about how much money they could be either A, overpaying their customers, or B, undercharging their customers. Oh, that's the same thing. Or under undercharging or overpaying their customers. That, so that it, we're going to write it down as 91. Because, I mean, what, we're going to write all these decimals down? No, we're not idiots. We're going to write it down as 91 cents. But we're not going to round it in our calculations because banks don't either. They just keep, I don't know how many decimals they actually keep. I would think four or five should do it. I mean, think about how big a transaction would have to be before any more decimals and that would affect the overall number. But I'm, we're keeping them all. So that means we're going to really rely on that answer button because I don't want to repunch all these decimals and neither do you. But anyway, the actual answer we're going to write down is 280.91. 280.91. And there's the answer for that. Okay, so that goes... Oops, wrong, wrong button, sorry. That goes, come on, that goes here. So that's my new interest payment, 280.91. See, I told you it would get smaller. It's like 30 cents, but still smaller. Okay, next, what's the new principle? Well, I just take that number minus that number. I don't know, do I even need to write it down? I think I know what I'm doing. I'm going to take 342.50 and minus that last answer I got. Oh, it's so nice to have an answer button. 61.59. Please notice, if I hadn't, if I had rounded that to an actual zero, and then I punched it in as a zero on the last calculation, that wouldn't be a 59, would it? But it is a 59, and I'll show you that banks do it that way too. Okay, unpaid balance now is this number minus that number. So again, I take out my calculator, and here's where I might end up being slightly different than the bank, because I don't remember that number. Well, I guess it's up there, but I don't have the ability on this calculator to just move that number down there. I'm gonna have to repunch it. So. 49,938.75 minus my last answer equals 49,877. And, and again, I'm going to round it to, 50, to 16 cents, but I'm actually going to use those decimals on my next calculation now. Speaking of next calculations, all I have to do to this number is add that number. So I might be able to do that mentally here. What's 25 cents add 59 cents? Well, if I added 60 cents, it would be 85. So it's 84. And if I add 61 to 61, I get 122. And there's a reason why I didn't want to touch my calculator for that one. I don't want to lose that number. I'm going to have to repunch it in because that's going to be what we do next. Next, we have to do the next row. So what's my new interest payment? Well, it's principal times rate. And it was, what was it again? I've forgotten this number twice now. 675, right, right. times time, which is again divided by 12. Boom. Now, oh, see, look at how much it's gone down now. $280.56. Oh. Can you feel the savings? And now I get this number by taking that minus that. So again, I have that number on the screen. So I just go 342.5 minus, and then the last number we had, answer equals. And that gives me 6194. And then what's my new unpaid balance? Where does that come from again? Oh yeah, that minus that. So I go back to the calculator, and on a fancier calculator, I could actually toggle up, take that number and move it down and then subtract my answer and I wouldn't have to repunch it. Oh, that'd be so nice. Four nine eight seven seven decimal one six minus my last answer. Oops, my last answer. Four nine eight seven seven 
last answer, equals 49,815. And what was, where does that one round? I guess it would be 22 cents. 22 cents. And then that means my equity is this number plus this number. So if I add those two numbers together, and again, I could probably do that mentally if I tried, I'd get 15,184.79. Well, actually, I'd get 78, because that's a 4 and that's a 4. So I guess I would get 78. Now, take a look at the next page, and you'll actually see that that decimal and that decimal are off compared to what they did on theirs. And that's because, remember, that when I used this number again, I did round it. It wasn't really 16 cents. It was 15 and change. But I'm happy with this. This is good. This is as much as I'd ever get you to do. You will have to do a chart where you have to do three payments. Oh, I guess I filled out the due date. They're monthly, right? So this will be 04, 10, 12. And then it'll be 05, 10, 12. And then eventually, if I kept doing this, do remember that there is not a 13th month in the year. Right? So if it actually gets to this number here being 12, the next one will be 1, and then the year changes. Right? Notice the day will still always be the same. Unless you decided to start paying your, your, your mortgage on February 28th. Then what happens? Or no, sorry, on a February 29th on a leap year. Then what happens? That's like next year, uh, I guess you paid on the 28th. I don't know. The overwhelming majority of people in this world like to have their mortgage come out on the first of the month because that's usually when they get paid. And most of us, our pay goes right into our bank account and then the mortgage payment comes out automatically. So we don't have to remember to pay our mortgage by going to the bank or getting online and paying online or paying over the phone. It's, it's kind of handy for it to come out. But having said that, every time you authorize a payment to come out of your bank account automatically, you should do the math. You should check to make sure that they are actually taking out what they're supposed to, right? Again, part of our theme here, banks are not our friend. I mean, sometimes they make mistakes, and you have to catch them. They don't catch themselves. All right, so that's it. You have to be able to try ones like this yourself. I'm going to stop the video here, but I am going to show you something else cool. Uh, this is something that people who miss class don't get to see. But anyway, people who are watching the video at home, you can start the homework now. The homework is, let me go back to the blog. Where did I put the blog? There it is, blog. The homework is, today's Wednesday, finish the 2A assignment if you're not done that, and then you can start on the 2B assignment, and the 2B assignment is basically what we just did today, blank amortization charts. I handed out a couple of extra blank ones today, so if you want to try working on like scrap paper and then put it in your actual workbook, you can do that. And again, though, if you're still working on the 2A assignment, finish that one first. So there we go. That's it.